Hey everybody, this is Rob Archangel of ArchangelInc.com and in this video I want to talk a little bit about pen names. One of the questions that we get somewhat frequently is am I allowed to publish under a name that is not my legal identity? Am I allowed to have multiple pen names to create multiple identities for my authorship and what are the implications, legal and technical and otherwise, that I should be concerned about? So the short answer to that is yes, you can absolutely publish under multiple pen names. It's very, very easy with Amazon. They make no indication or they make no verification of the, the name that you're using being the same as the name that's associated with their account. So for example, if I publish something as Rob Archangel and then the next book, I want to publish it as Bob Archangel and the uh, subsequent book, I want to publish it as Roberto Archangel or whatever. I can do that in as many iterations as I would like. Now, what about creating author central accounts? That is an area where there are some technical limitations, but there are also some workarounds. What do I mean by that? Well, you are allowed up to three different Amazon author pages associated with an email uh, address. So if you have more than three, you can certainly do that but you would have to associate them with a different email address. So if you have your principal KDP account, you would be able to associate up to three with that email address. And then after that email address, you would associate your accounts with a different variation, but it would still all be published under the same KDP account. And from a tax uh, standpoint, that's all tracked into the same dashboard you're still paid royalties going to the same accounts and you still receive W, excuse me, 1099 forms at the end of the year for any revenue earned as long as everything's published into that same account and under that same tax ID number. So uh, let's talk a little bit about legal implications. Sometimes people think that if they publish under a pen name, it will allow them to be anonymous and uh, publish things that may not that, that won't be able to be tracked. And if you are actually getting paid for that, that's not going to be the case. As mentioned, you do have to upload your tax information. So there will always be a way for the government or for legal authorities to recognize that these sales were associated with this particular tax identity. And so you are not going to be able to publish and make money completely anonymously. If that's of interest to you, maybe there are some ways using Bitcoin or other anonymous currencies, but that's out of the scope of this video and honestly beyond the, the scope of what I'm familiar with. But uh, with Amazon KDP, you're not going to have legal anonymity when you publish something and at the same time earn proceeds. However, there is a sense in which you can be anonymous, and that is you can publish under different pen names about topics that you may or may not be um, comfortable sharing with friends or family or colleagues or neighbors, and this alternate pen name is going to be a way to sort of anonymize it for you. So for example, let's say you are writing about a particular medical condition or some family situation or some oh, other personal matter that you don't want to share, you don't want to get out, then uh, you might consider having a pen name. That said, there are two things that I want to mention and to encourage you all to think about. One is from a brand standpoint, it's more advantageous to have multiple titles under a single name than to have one title under Joe Smith and then another title under Joe B. Smith and another title under Joe W. Smith and so forth. So if you're thinking about building your authorship brand, having multiple titles under a single account makes it easier for people to follow you, makes it easier for people who download and read your work in one identity to find it, uh, find your other uh, work under that same identity. So you don't necessarily want to publish one offs in lots and lots of different uh, fields unless you have a particularly strong reason to. Uh, the second thing that I want to mention is that you will not, uh, you're, you're not necessarily going to be um, 
able to maintain that anonymity if you plan on doing public presentations of any sort. So if you plan on doing author readings in public, or if you plan on doing oh, YouTube videos or podcasts or anything like that, where you're found and associated under a particular identity, then given the preponderance of data that is out there about just about all of us, if you are trying to re remain completely anonymous, you will probably have to preclude any of those public appearances in order to not be associated with, with that identity that you're trying to um, create as distinct from yourself. So again, let's say it's Rob Archangel and I'm publishing under the pseudonym Bob Archangel and I'm doing YouTube videos and I'm doing interviews and podcasts and I'm doing public book signings as Bob Archangel. It's very possible at some point somebody's going to say, oh, that, that looks a lot like Rob. Actually, this looks like Rob and that is not just Bob. I wonder if Bob and Rob are the same person. And again, enterprising individuals can cross-reference you with your social media accounts, with your internet footprint, and probably find information that can link you. So be very deliberate and mindful about that. Um, all of that said, that is not necessarily the concern that most people have. Much more commonly, people consider a pen name just because their legal name, their given name, is perhaps less common, it may be a little bit difficult to pronounce, uh, maybe a little bit difficult to remember, and so it's just easier to have a shorthand. So for example, you see that a lot in the entertainment industry. Martin Sheen is, I believe, Ramon Estevez. He's the father of Emilio Estevez. Emilio kept the family name. Martin Sheen obviously created his own identity under the Sheen surname, and his son, Charlie, has the Sheen surname as well. But at the time when he developed Martin Sheen, it was something that he he decided was a little bit easier to remember and, and a little bit um, more appropriate for him at that stage in his career, and he's continuing to use that Martin Sheen identity to this day. Now, anybody who is enterprising, just enters Martin Sheen real name on Google, will find his legal name, and it's not a secret exactly, but he still does work and assumes that moniker for the purpose of public consumption, and that's fine. So that's another reason that you may consider using a pen name just to have something that's a little bit more memorable and punchier and more likely to be, uh, to, to etch itself into the minds of your readers and not have them work too hard if you have a very difficult to pronounce or spell last name. Um, might be hard for them to enter it into a URL or into Amazon or whatever, so you create a, a shorthand. So hope that's been helpful. I hope that has gone over some of the implications of pen names. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Also, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and this is Rob Archangel of ArchangelInc.com. I will see you next time.